<laughs> so here we are then. Henrik, it is so good to see you. Oh my God, I think about you all the time. Thanks a lot for having me, Ryan. And yeah. when I had this, um, yeah, when I had this idea, I mean, I do an open mic in town and mm -hmm. I thought, well, why don't I do an open mic on the internet? And, you know, the first person, obviously, that I thought to have on for the first one ever is is you. So I'm so That's glad that lot. you could make this work. I'm far, I'm far away. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just thinking, if I look out the window and you look out the window, mm -hmm. we're looking at the same sun. That is true. Although the sun has been uh, it's kind of absent right now, but... We are pretty, it's pretty cold up here, but the, today me and my girlfriend, we were sitting out on the balcony, drinking coffee, reading the newspaper for a long time. And that was <laughs> amazing because that's sort of here in Denmark. That's when, okay, now the good season is about to start. You know, the I love that. Dark winter is over, <laughs> hopefully. And then I read the news. Uh, I saw the weather report reporting snow coming up, so. I feel like you're, in, <laughs> That's you're like, essentially in Canada. I love it. Especially about the weather here. A good rule is don't get too excited too fast. <laughs> don't get. <laughs> okay. So Henrik, I'd like to start off with a, a, bit, a little bit of a bit that I was really excited to do here. Um, because you live quite a bit closer to the Himalayas than I do. I uh, could be. I don't even know. I mean, could ask my daughter. She's been there. <laughs> well, since your daughter's even been there, I was thinking I would break the ice here with um, a, uh, an East Himalayan joke. Ah, that's a good that's a good start. Okay, well here it goes. I have a I have a joke book with um, every single East Himalayan joke in it, all six of them. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, here it goes. <clears throat> well, there was this East Himalayan traveling salesman. And his ox cart broke down in front of a farmhouse. He got up and he knocked on the door and the farmer opened the door and the traveling salesman said, Oh, 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 hey, mahu, savali, nane. <clears throat> and the farmer replied, akamaka, susu. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's yeah. Susu, too. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, you just cuts it, you know. Uh, All set. <laughs> Can't add it. Thank you. Case closed. <laughs> and I wanted to have... <laughs> thank you. I wanted to have Kara here, too, because I wouldn't know you if it weren't for Kara. And, and you're just both wonderful people. I'm so happy to know. So thank you, Kara. And and thank you, Henrik. And it's it, it's uh, and and you're gonna play us a, a couple of songs, and I'm gonna play one song, and you're gonna play us a couple of songs. But you were saying about to say some cool things before we went live, and I stopped you. <laughs> so tell us about this funny tuning. Are uh, the tuning? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I have to say that I was gonna play a couple of songs, and and uh, somehow I had to. I had to uh, bring uh, Jimmy Page into the picture because I heard Led Zeppelin all my life. And I think yeah. maybe it's not, maybe I'm being more influenced, you know, as musically with the Beatles or something. But certainly as a musician, I think just that uh, um, um, Led Zeppelin has just, has just never disappeared. You know, I've heard it sometimes all the times, sometimes not so much, but it sort of always uh, picks up here and there. And then I also had, you know, like a, I was a little to be a brag a little bit. Can you? Because <laughs> I got this on my wall here. Yeah, yeah. If you see oh, that, oh, see that? oh, look at that. So that wow. was like my big uh, hero, Jimmy Page, who, who I had the opportunity to interview uh, three times, actually. And, three uh, times. Well, that's you know, that's Stone's. And, uh, that's Stone's big hero too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stone was like one day. Did you see Jimmy Page on the side of the stage? Did you see that? You know what? Amazing. I was so nervous. <laughs> but anyway, so I got my guitar here. And um, you know, there of course uh, um of course Zeppelin are known for the for the riff rock and the whole lot of love stuff and all that. And they're also known for that folky things and uh, but then there are also these uh like really 
complex melodic almost like classical works uh you might even even say and i just uh happen to always love the song the rain song mm. which from the houses of the holy album and, and a funny thing i think if you hear the first song on that record which is the song remains the same you know they did that with a that that then they had us would have a song on one record which would be the name of their next album uh like that that's but funny if you yeah. listen to the song remains the same i think that would probably be my all-time bass and drums uh, rhythm section the way they play wow and then the next and then the next song which is what i'm going to play now it's just totally different and in 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 a, in a like in this almost fairy tale world or whatever but if people play guitar like this is so tuned and it would be yeah yeah e what's the weird good go yeah b g c g c d so it goes like this cut down here so i play a little of this song here it's uh, it was always been a personal favorite. So this is the rain song. Summers of my smile flee from me. Keepers of the blue speak to me only with your eyes. It is to you I give this to you. It ain't so hard. Thank you. 
so glad that you're the one who played that song <laughs> how do you remember how to do all that <laughs> i was a little I was a, there was a little little park up at the end and i uh, sang the first verse twice as that's okay twice. <laughs> but you know what i think i really think uh shows a lot about uh if you take led zeppelin you can say first it was the stones who stole the blues from the from america and then yeah uh, Led Zeppelin came and stole it in another way, and maybe added a you know more more the Americana and the and the and the sort of roots style, because even this is almost like you're going in your back move almost. If you play it, it's still it's so close to you can just put the full speed rock and roll like this. The uh, the B part is just full rock on, and if you for if I just for fun you play it a little fast, you know you can get this absolute Led Zeppelin riff things. It's just right there. But the way this is played is the, you know, this dreamy, this was the time where they, a lot of their songs were, they were uh, incorporating um, Lord of the Rings, like way before Peter Jackson and all that. You have all these things. So, but anyway, that's, you know, that's kind of a song I go back to also when you, if you're in a quiet mood or you want to sort of relax after a long day, it's like that. That's uh, it. Sort of sets the. And actually, you didn't hear it here, but but uh, they use um they they use uh, there's one verse I took out uh, uh, um with where they use the mellotron, and then it's like that is as distinct and sort of in music history as known that you if you say. This is, is this a metaphor? No, this is strawberry fields. You know, this is the, the strawberry mm -hmm. sound. Equally, you have the equivalent here. Oh, yeah, that's the rain song. You know, the rain song, Mellotron, that's like, it's not a Mellotron being used. 
playing the rain song, it's the rain song Mellotron. And, and then everybody else use it, they use the rain song Mellotron, you know? Yep, I get it. Wow. So, yeah. That was, that, was, that was very impressive. <laughs> was it, was the, a little bit, it was a little bit of a rough start on, I'm sorry. That's okay. No, no, no. That was wonderful. That was amazing. Wow. If I could just say, like, lyrically, li I've never listened to the song in that way before. The way that your voice kind of articulated the emotion, I felt it. And I'm like, well, I know what I'm doing after this. I need to listen to that song again. Ah, now, nice. Henrik, yeah. you'll always be part of that for me now. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it but it you know it is um I think like also uh, uh, Robert Plant himself you know he he took sort of distance to some of the some of the old Zeppelin uh, rock rock god style also the lyrics being like macho sexist uh, seen retrospectively uh, mm -hmm. but they always had this dreamy character to the man like also if you see there. Yeah, naturally stairway to heaven, uh, but 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 so much of the other it was like this sort of incorporating this made-up land, a fairy tale land, uh, like with these distinct uh, references to uh, to uh, Tolkien, to the Lord of the Rings, like mm -hmm. in the deepest dark of Mordor, I met a girl so fair, but God, I'm that evil one took her and crept away with her and you know that's like and uh, and uh, and i think that's that's their sort of so extremely great cooperation they had in the, um, uh, in in in, the, in that time and and like what they did and accomplished and something like their first four records this is from the fifth but the first four all like blockbusters were the fourth is that like the fifth best soul in the world or ever or something but from one to four it was made in two years and four and eight months i think Incredible. so they were just and I've, i'll be lucky because i had the opportunity also like, both to interview both of them when i was starting out i've got young journalist jamie page and um and uh, Robert Plant in the same room, and I was slightly scared. <laughs> All right, T tell us, tell us about that. Well, first uh, we we came up, we had that interview, and I didn't, you know, I just been a rock musician. I haven't interviewed anybody, but that's just sort of the way it got. And then we were two guys from uh, from uh, uh, Denmark, a journalist, and the first guy uh, who was in was like this really super renowned uh, journalist, actually a good good friend of mine uh, today, and. They kicked they kicked him out after seven minutes or something. <laughs> what did he what did he do? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, for me it was like, okay, I'm gonna get used to this. And uh, you remember uh, Life of Brian? But, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they write like bring in the Jew. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I hear a familiar voice shouting, "Bring in the Dane!" <laughs> and that was oh my God. And then uh, my first question was that, well, I was, I've been kind of waiting for this moment for twenty-five years. That was <laughs> the first thing I said. And then Robert Brown replied, "Okay, let's see if we can get it over with in twenty minutes." That was his reply. Wow. You, know? you just poured yes. your heart out and he's like, come on, let's time. do it. Yeah. <laughs> but then but then my my luck, that was the producer Vic Mayo, who used to do a record with uh, my old band, The Sharing Control, and who has been uh he uh, who has literally, especially on live records, everybody, you know, uh, uh Jimi Hendrix, um the who who live leads uh, uh, or and he he wrote five, he produced five um, Motorhead albums including Ace of Spades and and then he did some Zeppelin and of course we were huge Zeppelin fans so when he interviewed he told us all about you know how what did Jim Barnum do why did it you know blah 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 and then at some point during that interview which were Jimmy Page sitting at a table. And then Robert Plant doing some like what doing some dishes like watching a cop or something, and so it was lit. Not it was only with two of them, but I was sitting like that, and you've heard the intro, 
and I meant to say something about that Vic Mail, he said some like this and that. Atmosphere totally changed. Totally changed. And they were, and all of a sudden, Robert Plant, he was going like, well, Bonzo, this and that. And and I have to say that my all-time favorite musician of all categories has always been John Bonham, the drummer of Led Zeppelin. So, you know, wow. like of that, that that's been, he's always been number one, you know, of all, mm-hmm. even though I'm a bass player and a guitar player, but and uh, but that was so great, you know. So and the same when I've met later on, uh, many years later, I met um, uh, Jimmy Page. That was like, and, and I think it was really great because he remembered it so distinctly and so, uh, especially Jimmy Page is so totally. Well, he's proud of of their work, but also he had. He was the producer. He had all these ideas in mind. He came out of the Yardbirds, you know, the Yardbirds who had mm-hmm. three or two players, mm-hmm. Beck, Eric Clapton, and Jimmy Page. And had, he say how he sort of formulated that idea. We actually, there was actually a really fun clip on YouTube because I, I, I made it. Uh, I, I, uh, there was this Danish photographer who uh, old, this is an older guy. Uh, uh, who who took the very first pictures of Led Zeppelin and and who he he just photographed you know everybody at that time and he started out when he was fifteen and there was we are talking nineteen sixty eight or something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so there was really no limit so he was and I brought him up there and they they later got got very good friends with uh, and. and Robert Plan invites him when he's here, but they were talking about these details, like when all these years ago when Jan was fifteen and it was, but it was a really, really. Uh, this was not the first interview I mentioned, but but like this was two thousand and fourteen. But it's it's just got it's so fascinating for me how now talking about Jimmy Page. I mean, how into the stuff he is. I mean, it is. It is. Uh, I think it's probably have used the rest of his life for the legacy of uh, protecting whatever it is to protect. <laughs> you can say, uh, but it's for me extremely interesting to hear. And also, when you like playing the rain song here, which was sort of a little. It was after there. This is after Stairway to Heaven, and they had a little bit of break. I think this is 1973, mm-hmm. where where they had. Yeah, one to two, two years, but but I think I really got to because of these different interviews. I really got into the heart of it, and and just also now I had to read this really good interview. I thought with Stone Gossett here the other day, and how about this creativity is flowing, and how Andrew Watt, this young uh, young uh, pop genius, were uh, rocking in. <laughs> He enables to sort of capture all the individual uh, um, qualities and then meld it together, so everybody's just pouring out, but they don't have to worry about the this free space and and all of that. That's really listening to the Led Zeppelin records all my life, and then later on, I'm uh, getting to talk to especially Jimmy Page. And and who was sort of the mastermind behind it? It just and and how he told about how everything goes. You know, we were talking about we were not thinking of music. We were thinking. I mean, we were talking about painting. We were talking about fashion. We were talking about you know the <laughs> nature uh, as <laughs> physical sculpt, sculptures. You know, art. Just everything goes. And they just had these. But I think it also goes to show why, for me, why some periods which are so intense that they also are limited. You know, like we could say Bob Dylan's main period, Beatles, uh, Elton John in the early 70s, or maybe even Pearl Jam, uh, Nirvana early, and, and others. Like it's so intense that uh, that you can progress. But you also, you know, the momentum will also 
have a different shape at least you know well yeah it's well you know it's impossible to sprint for a day right you, yeah 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 and that's okay you know i think about that with pearl jam and you know the um i mean there was a period where people would make fun of me for, and i don't I mean it, it happened whatever this happened there was a period of time in the early 2000s when i would say oh pearl jam is my favorite band and like my bandmates would go really that's weird um and and then i'd be the guy who well, likes you guys, you mean. <laughs> yeah that, that's right but what i'm saying is you know that's okay because like during that intense time you know they gathered x amount of diehard fans but you know on whatever x album you know half the people you talk to will say well vitology didn't really do it for me or whatever and that's okay because they don't need to have everyone a fan in the entire universe in fact how could you like if you're doing something if you're doing something everyone likes you're doing something wrong yeah that's true yeah 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 that's the same you, you listen to people who say so what kind of loose music you like well all kinds of music okay that means you don't <laughs> like something a lot <laughs> right exactly yeah no yeah that, that's you like opposite. music you like you like background music that's what you tell like there you go <laughs> i like yeah. i like the concept of music i like yeah <laughs> I like I like measures and notes. I like notes. There you yeah. go. That's like my answer. It. I like notes. <laughs> but it was, your... I'm happy to be. I was actually gonna thinking of I was gonna play some Steve Harley. Do you know Steve Harley? Mm -mm. He just died, and he was uh, he was this uh, uh, he was from the 70s, and he was big here in Europe. He had this come up and see me, make me smile. It became an international hit. But for me, when growing up, he was almost like a David Bowie, which we grew up with also. And somehow uh, he he got a little forgotten. Uh, also, he was a real character uh, as far as the way he was dressing and his lyrics and many things. And and now, uh, yeah, sadly, he, he, he passed away. And then I was <coughs> heard it, and then I was, I'm going to, I'm gonna listen to those '70s records. Are they as good as I thought? And yes, they were. <laughs> and I had like a blast uh, going through some of his things. So, but but now I'm thinking, ah, uh, got, gotta go with, uh, gotta go with the rain song. Huh? Your your um your encyclopedic knowledge of uh and depth of detail of just about everything <laughs> related to related to the past 50 years of music is um daunting and uh i enjoy hearing you say anything that's all i wanted to say actually it's not thank you ryan but actually it's not even true i think also i've been and now i'm in my profession you know for all these years i've been uh, doing music journalism actually there's a lot of stuff Hell of a lot of stuff I do not know, and a hell of a lot of record. Okay, I have, but, I, but I think I get if I really like something, and and I can sort of make maybe make the dots or the connections. Uh, and there are, and as also you said, the devil's in the detail. And and actually, if I've t one thing about, I think that was my what I always remember as being um, uh, a writer. A, a, a interviewer, you know, then then uh, uh, if and if you interview your heroes, then go is the details you have to go for. If you come up and I also went to Eddie Vedder or whatever, you know, you meant so much for my life and uh, whatever. And people, yeah, thank you, uh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> and like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, can we get it over within twenty minutes? Exactly. And then I exactly. This, uh, then I remember this. Um, interview with uh, one of them with jimmy page and we were talking about john bonham content. and instead of i could have said yeah i mean i love him oh wow so we we have bought all we also always play with 28 the drums is because of him or blah, but you know whatever but then i said when I, there was this video which i really love and i said when you do the crunch and you do and the time when you'd sort of doing and when you when you like look into to bounce on like that doing this that's really cool or something and i remember when i said that jimmy page he was like he smiled you know and then he talked because he is i wasn't talking about i was talking about like this details show me why you are so good 
Yeah, well, I can relate to that because you know when I talked to when I talked to Stone last year, um, I zeroed in on I'd noticed that in like precisely the last eight. Well, this is this is here. This is me being a nerd now, right? I zeroed in on I noticed the specific instance in in his music when he started putting fifths in the base of his power chords, uh-huh. right? And I yeah, really, yeah. really enjoyed that. <laughs> that, yeah. that. Talked about that exact detail, right? Yeah, I mean but, that's a perfect example. Like this guy had listen and he actually he he that's what i'm getting at and he 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 got it you know because sometimes yeah. there's so much surface or so much you know all the stardom and whatever a uh, fan thing about bands that for, for the individuals actually playing it that could be pretty boring to talk about you know mm-hmm. absolutely but, it's as i always say i used to i used to play a lot of baseball as a kid and i like i was a pitcher and I always wished I could hit against myself. You can't hit against yourself. You can never have that side of the experience. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just got to get <laughs> All right. Listen, my turn. My turn here. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking about what song I wanted to play here. And so my, sto- my, my story in getting into guitar seriously in short is um, when I... W- Pittsburgh in 2000 was my first Pearl Jam concert and I played Mm -hmm. guitar a little bit um, but it wasn't till in fact it was my first rock and roll concert it wasn't until that concert that I decided that guitar was what I wanted to do with my life and it was such a definitive you know Mm -hmm. I think it's rare in 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 a lifetime that you're like well I'm gonna go to college and be a professional whatever I didn't remember um, and then one moment you're like, nope, I'm doing guitar. And, and here we are <laughs> like 24 years later. Right. And I'm doing guitar. So not a bad. Anyways, I actually hadn't listened to binaural before going to that concert. So, you know how, when you go to a concert and you hear songs you've never heard before, it's not, but one, yeah, song, yeah. there it is. She's got the binaural. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, you've been t-shirt. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a- but it was uh, it was parting ways that I really um, enjoyed uh-huh. that night, and in parting ways, it's like E, and that that, that note changes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So I had never written a song before in my whole entire life, and I, this is September fifth, two thousand. I know the date because it's on the bootleg, right? And mm-hmm. I go home. I go home that very night, and I instead of an E chord, I pull up a C chord, and I went. And I thought, now that's nice. And and mind you, I knew nothing about music, so I thought I invented that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Certainly I didn't. Um, and then somehow I arrived at A minor. And you, look, you can do the same thing. And I went, well, that's cool. And then F sounded cool. And then G sounded cool. And here I thought I invented one, six, four, five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, so, yeah. Nevertheless... You know, <laughs> you got, if you have that patent, you know, got you. There you go. That'd be okay, pretty I'd, good. You know, I'd, I'd be like very re- yeah. Fifty cents for everybody who did that chord progression. That's exactly right. But um, you know, because of my, you know, my, you know, emotional musical connection to Pearl Jam and you, and 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 you, of course, and and I've been saying for a little while now that I was going to ask you to play bass on something, and I think yeah, it, yeah. nothing nothing would be more perfect if it was if it was this one. You know, since that's that's such a marker in my life, um, and so it's it, you know, I was thinking maybe he'd like to do a more fun song or so. But but this is this one means so much to me, um, and it won't be the only one, obviously. So maybe this one will be a good place to start. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's called Burning, and it's twenty four years old. Though our path 
us may part. So love stone, empty heart. It's all made soft eventually. Now I wonder why. Oh, I start to cry. The old synopsis candidly is burning, burning like a flame of temporary fame. Oh, it will stop. Burning. I put a little off he goes in here, right? Don't try to stay awake. Please don't try to stay awake. Please don't try to stay awake. Whoa, without you, I would never. Never be the same. And it's it's just like a thank you. <laughs> it's a, a good yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. So I'll I'll send you a demo. Yeah, it, yeah. I'll send I'll send you a demo of me doing that so we so we can start working on that. Um, but yeah, it's like That's um. I got my favorite bass right here. I actually own bass. Perfect. Bass. That's right. <laughs> It's a, it's like a it's a love song to every friend you've ever had is is what that song is about, mm. which is a great thing. Which is a great thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean sometimes you know, even I in so, you know the, the concept of love and some songs are so limited. Often, I like you know one if you if I take a, a, a classic song like do you know he ain't heavy he's my brother by the Hollies. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's just like that's the love to the that's the love of your brother, or that's like, and I I I think that's sometimes love, you know, also also the concept I love you, and some conversations can be also and meaning I owe you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But, yeah, yeah. But the open good concept of love, you can never have enough of that. Exactly. And, uh, burning. Yeah. Great. Cool. Thank you. It's yeah. It's my copy of uh, what's what was the song I said? Uh, Parting ways. That's right. Yeah, and when you know, I wouldn't have uh, if you haven't mentioned it, I wouldn't have uh, thought it. But but it but 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 it makes sense. And also some of the some of the Pearl Jam songs I build up like is, has Stone written that? Uh, do you know? I'll, I'll bet is, you is anything. Uh, Parting ways has to be Eddie. Hmm. Yeah. You know, just this anytime it's like a sim well, no, I don't mean this in the way that it sounds, but when it's like, or, hey, this is right here and it's really cool. Yeah. Oh, and also, yeah. it, has to, it, it also, it also has to be Eddie because it goes like this. And Eddie's the only person who can do that. <laughs> right? Yeah. I was, I was doing. I was he's doing probably like getting, he, he probably forgot it, and he'll call you soon. To, you know, to, <laughs> I was I was doing light years yesterday, and I, I I I never knew how to play it right. I had my silly idea, but Eddie does yeah, this. Yeah, you know, yeah. It has to be anytime yeah. it's that it's Eddie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I oh, like yes, that was with me for many years. You know, I really uh, I still, but it's it's nice to go back go back to but of course obviously that's also for us experiencing the roscular tragedy absolutely uh, yeah mm -hmm. mm -hmm. firsthand you know yeah. and that became the sort of for me that was like the the signature of it, it, it i understand it yeah. so and uh, so uh 
and that I think that just like buried with people who are who was close to it and been infected by it so much is sort of like last time when I spoke with Storm, we didn't talk about it at all. I, I, I think this, but we talk about maybe some of the people we know to get from there, but it, but but we were very well aware that it's part of. You know, right? Our, I mean, uh, what shame um, does. yeah, what, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's all been it's all been said so many times, right? Just because you don't yeah, mention yeah, yeah. it specifically yeah. doesn't mean you know you're not thinking of you know. So yeah, could can I just say like I, my heart is just pounding right now because coming into this, I didn't know what you know what I would say to be of any use to you guys, but. <laughs> I was searching to try and find the oldest Pearl Jam shirt I have. I couldn't find it, but I found this one. And when I go back in my Pearl Jam history, I lived my little teenage years up until 2000, praying for the day that I'd see that band. I was a kid. By the time 2000 came around, I saw them in Toronto. So just, I don't know if I think it was just after Ryan would have seen them in Pittsburgh. And that was such a, a massive change in that band's history. And then reading your book, Henrik, like, I can't tell you how many times my heart exploded. I cried. I laughed. I felt all the emotion that you guys have already talked about. You're not just telling the stories of Russ Gilda. You're telling all of our stories because it did affect the whole community related to the music. And that's such a beautiful superpower that you have to be able to, to bring that together for so many people in the name of music, in the name of love. So it's just, um, it's so magic. Wow, that we can talk about it. That's really nice to hear. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, and and I, I, I really also think I've, I feel uh, like, like it's not my story, or it's it's yeah. uh, it's um, very many people's stories, or it's very it's it's. Uh, I just uh, happen to be there, and and mm -hmm. for, for very. You, for various reasons and, and and things unfolded. And the funny thing is by writing that book originally, like the first one, mm -hmm. it was that that uh, when Stone called me or contacted me uh, to get, which is now yeah, 21 years ago, actually this year, to that we were, can you make a trip? Uh, can, I, I want to meet, I want to meet some of these people uh, if they want to meet with me. And, 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 but the thing was that, the whole idea was that I should be the opposite of it. You know, it was total, um, what was it, confidential, confidentiality. I should be the opposite of a writer. In, and and actually, I was kind of dumb because then I remember we were coming up to one of the families and then Storm were hitting at me and saying, maybe you should um, take a different bag. And then I had this Rust Killer Festival bag and I haven't even thought about it, you know. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck, you know, underneath the seat and thanks, Stone. And and the whole idea was that nobody should know. No, nope, you know, the absolute opposite of doing writing and journalism. Mm -hmm. But then it was because of the these unexpected how the unfolding of events and meeting with people and um, and all of a sudden, I think this is you know this is a an incredible experience. Maybe, maybe more people than me would uh, could appreciate that. And but then I finally asked Stone, and he was like, "Well, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking for a long time you're gonna ask me that, you know, sure." Wow. Yeah. yeah, but uh, he, he he didn't ask, but he said, "Yeah, I, I, I," because probably he felt as well that this was. And then um, it's just also now when dark matter is coming out, I've been doing different things also, uh, and I've been. You know, do all these different things, but then you get all these contacts. I mean, I've been talking with people from Chile, and I just wrote a guy from uh, from Australia here who ended up also donating a hell of a lot to to my book because it, it, he said it, it meant so much to him. And originally, he rejected the book because mm -hmm. when it came out, he thought like, okay, this guy trying to make money on a tragedy, and he was a huge fan. And then he didn't read it for 10 years or something. And then when he read it, <laughs> finally yeah. after all these years, he wrote me like the longest email in my, of my life. <laughs> my That's and, okay. And he lives in Brisbane. <laughs> He's a Danish guy, but lives in Brisbane, in Australia. And yeah. and my daughter and uh, my boyfriend at the time, they've been there, you know, like uh, 
guest for as, as long as you want and they had a great time and he he just wrote i just wrote him because he went what do you think about that matter and and uh, i'm drunk i having fun and mm -hmm. but it's just one of very many examples of um, yeah it's been as, as to be part of this ongoing process. i just <laughs> i just <laughs> noticed I just noticed that you actually wrote Tux and Hendrix on your. I did too. <laughs> well, you know, I, should, I should figure that because it is. If I have it, you know, I'll, I'll, just a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think he should just change his name to Hendrix. <laughs> I mean, I would. Uh, uh, let me see what this is. Uh, ah. I, we, we, we um, my girlfriend moved in, so we changed around, so I can't find anything. What? No, I think I, mean, <laughs> no, I think I know where it is. Just a second. So you cleaned up. <laughs> That's right. That's the only time I clean up is when someone else comes over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess while Henrik's looking, I'll tell my other East Himalayan joke. <laughs> As you do. As one does. All right, here it is. Uh, an East Himalayan bum walked up to me on the street one day. Oh, I got <laughs> there. He is. One. I can't. I can't find because you know I kept a couple of these th things here. Uh, yep. Some of these stickers, Pittsburgh. and one of them which I can't find, which I thought I found. That said, on the flip side, this says Henrik Tuxen spelled wrong. Yeah, um, but one of them said Tuxen Hendrix. Tux and Hendrix, yeah. I don't know. It was Stone, or it was Smitty, or, or, or whoever. I don't know, but it was. I thought that was a good name. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Henrik, do another one for us. Oh, what yeah. else you got? You know what? I want to play a Danish song, but oh. maybe maybe uh, you talk a little bit because I need to tune this. Uh, <laughs> okay, here. I'll mute you. Just uh, oh, I can't yeah, mute you. Did you mute me? I can just go like this when you're done ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's muted. Okay. Yep. All right. Here, Good. here we go. Here's my here's my second East Himalayan joke. <laughs> Not gonna make any sense to anyone because they weren't here at the beginning. Here we go. An East Himalayan bum walked up to me on the street one day and said, "Ana ho ho uni aha awahi tiki," and I said, "Yehi taho gurka hama." Oh, oh, I get it. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> Damn it. I'm like, <laughs> well, I've okay, never now I'm gonna... said quite like that before. But... Now I'm going to sing the silliest song anyone's ever written. Are you ready? Ready. This is about a, a fictitious cat named Dirty Mitzi. Well, Mitzi, and she's always dirty. Her name's <laughs> not Dirty Mitzi. It goes like this. Me and Dirty Mitzi were two of a kind. Suffice it to say, she's my kind of guy. I am a human and she is a cat. And that's all there is to say about that. It's a classic. <laughs> Thank you. I oh, is he signaled something? He's, I don't know. <laughs> Did he do Did he the motion? We, uh, need, the, we need this exact need motion. Hands, yes. <laughs> He's still working on it. I don't know. I, I got nothing else. What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, oh, 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 no, no, like timing. this, like this, though. <laughs> he went like this. I don't know if that's like a trick. <laughs> I think it's the same. No. That's the thing. Okay. Oh, get him, get him on. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> okay. Welcome back. Well, you know, I was, I was, uh, I was thinking I should, I should uh, sing something Danish. And like I told you, Ryan, I've, uh, I've started writing my own music and I actually uh, got to have, quite a lot of it but i was thinking I, I took a little bit of a break for it you know when you do done something a lot then it's nice to yeah. so i kind of haven't heard any of my own songs for uh for a month or so so i'm not going to play any of that <laughs> but what i'll play is my own take on uh, on a danish song from 1960 and it's called for elskede Copenhagen," which means in love in love with copenhagen and it is uh, <laughs> okay and I am, you know, I am not only am from Copenhagen, but I think also 
I'm half Danish. I've half Norwegian, and now I'm I'm working as a as a tourist guide and a sailor in the, in the harbor of Copenhagen. How and cool! I'm more, I'm more into the history, and uh, I think uh, the older I get, the more Nordic I get. <laughs> Also, I've had the opportunity to travel so much, and uh, and now it just seems to be uh, uh, yeah, this real appreciation of our own culture. On the, you know, like I was on, a, I'm half Norwegian, and then uh, I, last time I was uh, up in um, Norway, uh, it was not only that I was like looking up what did my family do during the Second World War, but it was like driving out to the villages and. Uh, Hello, I'm the grandson of uh, Ingrid uh, Vik. Uh, did you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, and so like really getting into the details. Yeah. But then this song is my own take. It's it's it really is the duet of Danish and Sweden. Okay. You know, we are only we have at the narrowest point four kilometers or five kilometers. Oh, okay. To bridge to Sweden, but we're still quite. In many ways similar, but also quite different. So this take is, this is this song, where is this uh, Swedish jazz singer and this Danish man, and they are they are up in the they are up in the ferry wheels of Copenhagen, and you see him over the song, and then he's he's like I'm in love, and I'm and I'm in love in Copenhagen, and and he's like yeah 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 yeah, and then you know of course it ends I'm in love with you. <laughs> so it's just really to it, but then now it's because we had this. Uh, what happened uh, Tuesday is that the stock exchange, which was 400 years old, burned to the ground. Mm-hmm. And actually, I was on job, and when the whole wall fell, I just passed it, you know, with a bunch of tourists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, so all these, um, and and when you see the video of this original video of this song. They are up in the Ferris wheel, and I just saw it from 1960. So innocent, uh, uh, you um, uh, you see, for instance, also the stock exchange there. But I think this guy who wrote us is is, is uh, his name was he's known as Ben 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 Fabric, and and he did themes, you know, and he did and he did songs, and it was, but he said from him, he said he just died. 96 years old uh, three four years ago wow. and he was oh i was nothing you know i was just i was just doing my job if they asked me to do a song then i did that and i did the theme but but here it's like his songs are so and he's not and maybe even more his themes are so incredibly strong cultural uh um um has such a weight here and he actually, but he actually already had a hit in 1962 in in the USA. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept... <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but anyway, this is a uh, this is my take on uh, on a Fajlske uh, Kupman. Not like I do it, and actually, um, my friend who's playing uh, drums with me, and who's actually been my boss for ages because he's the he was for for three three thirty years or something. He was the CEO of Gaffer, who I've been writing for. I made a song to his wedding on this song, but I'll I'll stick to the I'll try to stick to the to the original lyrics as much as I can. <laughs> It's got. I think it's got some of the sort of what is known as the uh, the the Nordic mel- melancholic. I think you hear some of that in it. Why I'm 
estaba en cuestión y el día que llegó. Ay, ay, parece que I have no idea what you said, and I love that it's, song. <laughs> it's it tropical. I don't know how. I felt like we were in Hawaii. It's gorgeous. I was in Hawaii. <laughs> Henrik, I need the. I need you to. I need to. I'll email you. That'll be the burden will be on me. I need to know where I can hear that song. And uh, yeah, I, I awesome. think actually the the arrangements that are on this song. This is. I have to say, I think this is something I just kind of made up with all the, these code. But but the basic, I'll let you know and. Uh, and I just saw that video from 1960s as well. It's, it's just beautiful. amazing. And then often, you know, it's been do like uh, later you, the the duet things, you know, all, all, which is almost uh, that you have something stupid and you have all these uh, classic duets. Uh, this has often been used for an actors later on. They take it up on a special tribute and. And so you see these actors singing this, and especially with this Danish Swedish, it's like, you know, the you say tomato and I say tomato. And yeah, yeah. You know, it has this, it has this twist on it. But I really like that. I think he's such an elegant songwriter, and such a and and some of the themes for. The biggest sitcom we ever had. Uh, uh, hi, cat. <laughs> and Ferguson, like uh, <laughs> and your cat. Just, it's just like he he is strong in our culture, and and he didn't. He was like, yeah, you know, and and that goes. That's all. Uh, and and it's just really interesting that he was like. Well, these have, they just asked me to wrote a theme, so I wrote a theme, and it's just like goes go slide this, and totally. St <laughs> he played tennis way up in his nineties. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I never, I never, I, I met him, but I never really, I had, I didn't have the chance to interview him, but I've been playing tennis alongside of him. Okay, cool. oh, alongside of him. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, the tennis guy. And he the, played on and, a different court, and he knew the people I was playing with. So and and the table been, and the table tennis guy. That's right. Yeah. yeah. How could I forget? Like, I didn't forget. I remembered. Perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but thanks for like, that. Was uh, nice to play a bit of historical Danish. Uh, uh, I feel truly blessed to have been watching that live. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, that was so 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 cool. Amazing. And. Uh, I wish I could talk to you for hours, but I have to go teach guitar lessons to people. That's a thing, and I, prom <laughs> I promise to make dinner. <laughs> Perfect. So, okay, naturally, we have to close with the traditional Craziest Friends theme song, since this has been a meeting of the Craziest Friends. Yeah, yeah. All you two have to do is say, <laughs> oh, no, I got this. I got No, we've got three of us. So it's going to be like this. I'm going to go... 
Und- no, no, no. Oh, we've got two of you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So here, oh, here's what it sounds like. I don't think Henrik's ever officially done the craziest friends theme song before. Uh, I think I'm. Uh, It'll come it's, back. It, it goes like uh, it, it goes. It goes like this. Undeniably, most decidedly, the craziest friends. That's how it goes. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So, so Kara, you're gonna be undeniably. Okay. Henrik's gonna be most decidedly. Most decidedly. Yeah. Most decidedly. And then <laughs> while it won't work because that's not how audio on the internet works. But we'll yeah, all yeah. say crazy as friends and, yeah. and that's it. It'll be, <laughs> It'll be a <laughs> okay. beautiful disaster. But you first, everybody... Kara, right? You first. Yeah, yeah. She's undeniably, you're most decidedly. Decidedly. Most decidedly. We're all the craziest friends. Yeah. Let's do it. And there's obviously I've there's a little there's a little before, <laughs> right? I think I've been, I think I am. <laughs> you got <laughs> all right, here we go. Ready? Kara. Undeniably. Henrik. Most decidedly. All of us. The craziest, the craziest friends. friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that's recorded on the internet for the yeah, that's, that's <laughs> eternity. For generations to Oh generations my God. Back. Well, my goodness. Henrik, we'll have to have you back because like I said, I could we could have heard you talk for eight hours. That was beautiful. Thank you for yeah. sharing with us. Thanks a lot for, uh, for having the opportunity. It was great to share some music stories and play them also. Yeah. And listen to you as not at least in your good. Uh, oh, and you, you, I'll, I'll be bugging you very, very soon. So we'll talk, <laughs> okay, <that's good. laughs> talk to you soon. Bugged. Yeah. Kara, thanks for hanging out. Everybody yeah, who's, love, everybody, everybody. Who's, everybody who's here. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll all talk very soon. Henrik, thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Love. You too. Bye. Peace out, folks. Peace out. <laughs>